Hello, good day, sir. So, I am Janice A. Dragons from B. Scream to B. So, for today's video, I'm going to discuss the given topic and questions about terrorism and victimology. So, without further ado, let's get started. The first question is define terrorism and its brief history, especially here in the Philippines. So, terrorism involves the use or threat of violence and seeks to create fear and not just within the direct victims but among a wide audience. So the Abu Sayyaf group or the ASG is the most violent of the Islamic separatist group operating in the southern Philippines and claims to promote an independent Islamic state in western Mindanao and the Sulu archipelago. Split from the Moro National Liberation Front in the early 1990s, the group currently engages in kidnappings for ransom, bombings, ass assassinations, and extortion and has had ties to Jemaya Isl Islamia. So, a historic Muslim resistance to non-Muslim rulers in the Philippines broke out into massive rebellion in the 1970s. The two largest resistance groups is the Moro National Liberation Front or the MNLF and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front or the MILF. Both the Philippines government into the 1990s and entered into the news truces in 1996 and 2001 respectively. So Abu Sayyaf emerged in 1990 as a splinter group composed of former NLF and fighters and Filipino who had fought in Afghanistan. Abu Sayyaf resorted to terrorist tactics including executions of civilians, bombings, and increasing kidnappings for ransom. So Abu Sayyaf had links with Osamu bin Laden's Al-Qaeda organization in the early 1990s, but these links reportedly dwindled in the late 1990s. After the 2002 Balikatan operation, the remaining Abu Sayyaf leadership established links with Jama Islamia, an Al-Qaeda affiliated group in Southeast Asia that had begun to use Mindanao for trainings and organization organizing terrorist strikes. So Abu Sayyaf also established links with Raha Sulaiman, a radical Muslim group made up, made up of Filipinos from the Northern Philippines who had converted to Islam. Together, these groups carried out major bombings after 2003, including bombings in Metropolitan Manila. Number two, discuss the organizational structures of terrorist groups. So terrorist groups strive to balance efficiency with their need for security. This article examines the factors that affect groups' choice of organizational structure. To classify 254 groups from the Global Terrorism Database into one of four basic structures, market, all-channel, hub, spook, or bureaucracy. The result of multinomial logistic migration revealed that as secret organizations, terrorist groups are not just driven by achieving efficiency in the organization but rather protecting against infiltration and threats. Number three question, discuss the various types of victims. So the various types of victims are the primary victimization, secondary victimization, re-victimization, and self-victimization. So um, when we talk about primary victims, it is a person who is injured or dies as a direct result of the violent crime committed against him or her. So the second one is secondary victims. So when we talk about secondary victims, it is a person who is present at the scene of a violent crime and who is injured as a direct result of witnessing that crime. So the, while the re-victimization is the survivors of abuse can experience, re experience repeated trauma through re-victimization. So and the last one is the self-victimization. So self-victimization is the fabrication or exaggeration of victimhood for a variety of a reasons such as to justify abuse of others or what we call to um, manipulate one. Number four, discuss the four major theories of victimology. So these are the victim precipitation theory, lifestyle theory, deviant place theory, and routine activities theory. So victim precipitation theory, it maintains that some people instigate or initiate a particular confrontation that may in the end lead to the person becoming victimized by injury or death. 
So, there are two types of precipitation, the active or a passive. So, lifestyle theory. So, lifestyle theory, it, many criminologists assume that those whose lifestyle increases criminal exposure are more likely to become victims of crime. So, behaviors such as going out late night, associating with younger men and residing in urban area increases risk of becoming a victim. Deviant place theory. This theory holds that victims do not motivate crime but rather are more likely to become victims due to the fact that they live in a social areas that are disorganized and contain high crime rates and therefore have the highest risk of coming into contact with criminals regardless of their lifestyle or behavior. So the final theory. It is the Routine activities theory which concludes that the volume and distribution of predatory crime are closely linked to the three variable interactions that present the typical routine activities executed in American traditional lifestyle. These three variables include 1. Available and suitable targets such as unlocked homes that contain sellable goods. Number 2. No proper guardians such as police, homeowners, neighbors, and relatives. And lastly, number three, the presence of potential offenders such as addicts and those who are unemployed. So that's all for today's discussion. Thank you and have a good day ahead, sir.